This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. You're listening to Wednesday Wonders on the Mutual Audio Network. Be amazed. The following audio drama is rated G, which means it's perfectly safe for folks and families of all ages. Yes, even Grandma. Enjoy! This is a presentation from Dream Realm Enterprises, where dreams are our reality. No, not music. For the... And the company conquering heroes have just defeated the mighty mice of Mars in this 3 tattoo overtime victory. What a finish for the Cosmos Hockey League's 3006 season. And on the next exciting installment of As the Galaxy Drifts. Oh, Rusto-15, won't you please leave Excalibrator 5 and run away to Electroland with me? But I can't run away with you, Jobot. But why? Because Excalibur 5 is having my baby bot. Rubbish. Last time on Robots of the Company. Oh, no, this is more like it. Lieutenant Potch! Here and ready for duty, Command the Mikado. Uh, that's odd. Did I miss one? I don't recall them picking her up in the last episode. And I had no clue Duke was a she. Oh, I don't believe it. The first order of business is to evaluate the crew. Oh, that'll be easy. I know these guys better than I know myself. I should hope so. It'll make it easier. Uh, pardon me, but make what easier, Commander? Choosing which bots on board the Titan One who are useful, and which bots should be melted down for scrap. Did you say scrap? That's exactly what I said, Lieutenant. Some of these bots are going to be recycled. But that means some of them will be destroyed. Destroyed? Melted down? Scrapped? Oh boy. What's going on again? Yep, we're moving. And now, the exciting conclusion with the next amazing episode of Robots of the Company, entitled The News and the Art of Toast, written by Jonathan Patrick Russell. The Art of Toast. What bollocks. They're coming soon to a radio station near you. Ah. And welcome back to the show. We're happy to welcome new listeners here to Channel 55 on the dial. And we thank you for listening to our new show. I'm Expositron 1. And the more astute amongst you listening out there will deduce that I am Expositron 2. That is, if you have any intelligence at all. Well, our first guest this evening certainly needs no introduction. So we'll give him none. Come on out here. Excuse me, gentlebots, but it is most illogical not to announce me, as I think your listening audience could have forgotten who I am. Somehow, I doubt that, Dr. Speck. Rubbish, rubbish, more rubbish. Welcome to the Dr. Phil Botnick's Brocket Show. Today's topic is robotic marriages gone bad. And with us today is a robotic couple who have come here on my show to very wisely seek my advice. Please join me 
and welcoming Excelsior and Squeak to the show. Yeah, it's that hard that you took my place, robotic hussy. Now you come on my show to seek help with your troubled marriage. So why don't you tell me what exactly is the problem between you two? We'll start with you, a Miss Squeak. Thank you, Dr. Philbot. Oh, sure. Start with her. Hush, Excelsi. Uh, yes, dear. Now, now, hang on there just a moment, Miss Squeak. Do you see what you just did there? What? You've just effectively shut your husband down right here in front of everybody. Well, what are you talking about? He interrupted me, and I just told him to shut up. He's always doing that. He's so rude. I am not rude, woman. I am commanding. I told you to shut up, Excelsi. No, sorry, dear. Now, 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 hold on there a minute, Mr. Excelsior. Can't you see what you just did? I mean, what are you thinking? Hey, hey, shut up out there, or I will have to blast you with my heat ray. Now be nice. Uh, uh, oh, all right, my dearest little dumpling. Now, now, Miss Squeak, you just shut your husband down again. Is this the way you behave at home? Sometimes my husband gets a bit... bossy. Bossy? In the beginning you love my commanding nature. We're in public, Excelsi. Pipe down. No, I will not pipe down. I don't even know what that means, but I won't do it. Excelsi, if you don't shut your speakers off, I'm gonna... Uh, no, no, Miss Squeak. Let your husband talk. Uh, that's what you're here for, after all. It's why they call it a talk show. Uh, go on, Mr. Excelsior. When we first met, she used to encourage my universal domination and all-around imposing nature and boastfulness. These days, all she does is nag, nag, nag. I don't get a minute's peace. I've even caught this terrible space cold, you see. And does she even care? No, but still she nags me. Is that true, Miss Squeak? Do you nag your husband? I wouldn't call it nagging. It's just, well... I suppose I just look at things in a different light these days. What is that supposed to mean? I look at Excelsi differently these days since ca Since... I command you to stop calling me Excelsi, woman. Get my name right or just keep your metal trap shut. Now, now hang on there a minute, Mr. Excelsior. I, I think... We may be on to something here. What exactly were you referring to, Miss Squeak? Well, to be honest, Dr. Philbot, things have changed a lot recently on the ship. We've got a new captain now, and... Just hang on one cotton-picking minute here. Cotton-picking? Are we from the country all of a sudden? Excelsi or... Sorry, dearest... I will destroy you, woman! Now, now, you two! Now, calm down! I knew it! You are attracted to that... that... tin head of a captain! Brick Jammer! Well, he's... heroic... dashing... handsome... You... you used to think I was handsome! I did! I mean, I do! But he's just, just, oh, <laughs> heroically handsome. But, but, but. <laughs> I actually find myself caring about something. Now that is serious. Sarah. 
And now, coming to you live from the Rockefeller Center in Newark, New York City, it's the Robot News Update with your dueling news anchors, Fizz Gizzit and Frank Meltdown! Today in Robot News, bananas! Yes, next week is Intergalactic Banana Week, sponsored by the company. Praise the company. And here to celebrate it is our very own Frag Meltdown with this very special commentary. Frag? Well, Fizz, as you know, next week is all about bananas. Why? Because bananas are good. In fact, bananas are considered sacred on at least 14 different planets, worshipped as gods, if you can believe such nonsense. Hang on there, Frag. We should respect the beliefs of primitives. Well, there are none so primitive as you, Fizz. I have to stop you there, Frag, as we simply don't have time for your nonsense this week. Right now, we're just supposed to act as feeds for this week's installment of the Rob Report. So take it away, Rob, who is coming to us live from the Sierra Desert. Well, thank you, Frizz and Frag. Well, hello, all you robots and robots. Well, today we're located in the Sierra Desert. You know, they have some snakes and a scorpions down here. Well, anyways... The temperature here is 110 degrees, and boy, is my oil just boiling. And clear, I mean, I can see sand for miles and miles. Uh, Bert, what is in that box you got in your hand? Bert, why are you opening that box? And, well, Bert, what are you pouring all over the sand? What, Bert, what are you doing? Bert, those are scorpions, Bert. Why are you chasing them towards me? Bert, why are you chasing them towards me? Bert, I'm going to tell you my sister on you. Bert, you stop it. Bert, stop it. Back to you, Frizz and Frank. Bert! Bert, I can't run in this sand. <laughs> why are you so mean to me? <laughs> Oh, hey. Um, a microphone. Wow, am I on the radio? Wow, cool. I like this. Hello up there in Radio Land. I am Briscoe the Robot, and I am coming to you live from the CS Titan 1. <laughs> Today, I want to tell you about... Oh, my job! Yeah! You like hearing about that? Well, it's really cool. I get to clean lots of dirt and grime and... Hey! Hey, where are you going? I'm gonna finish telling you about all the cool stuff I clean. I want to make toast. But I'm the toaster. I am the only one on board who decides when or if toast gets made. But I'm the captain of this tub, and I want to make toast. No way! Forget it. Not gonna happen. Hello, dear listener. You must have realized by now that you're not getting a normal episode of your favorite show this week. Uh, assuming this is your favorite show. I mean, you could be thinking to yourself, boy, I really hate this sh-. It's a sad state of affairs that your heads are being played with, just to get a couple of simple plot points across. And they're not really even that interesting, these plot points. But doing our usual shtick of being the expository feeds for random information... Here now is some legitimate sounding news. What crap this series truly is. And now, the news. Sources at company headquarters reveal the sudden buildup of military forces around the planets Earth, Venus, and Mars. It is suspected that the company is planning on a hostile takeover of rival companies Beta, Gamma, and Oz Enterprises, with an eye strongly focused on Dream Realm Industries to gauge their reaction. This news could have wide-reaching impact and could even affect radio programming right here on this very station in the weeks ahead. We will be attempting to cover this developing story and will keep you as informed as possible on this probable galactic corporate war. And now, some music for your listening pleasure. I've been coming to the opening night of Sean's play since he was a little boy in the Christmas pageant.
<laughs> now, Miss Squeak, don't you have something to say to your husband? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. Go on, then. Excelsior? <laughs> yes, dear? Shut the f*** up! Oh. <laughs> I want my mommy. Oh. Well, all I can say is, what are you thinking? And get real! <laughs> Come to think of it, that's all I ever do say. Ah, rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. You have been listening to Robots of the Company, episode number 305, The News and the Art of Toast, written by Jonathan Patrick Russell, which starred, in order of appearance, Old Squeak, Jonathan Patrick Russell, the sportscaster, Jeff Niles, the soap opera narrator, Steve Anderson, Gilbot, Danny Cutler, Rusto15, John Morse, Introducing Commander Duke Makato, Michelle Walters, Putch, Joe Thomas, Zimtron, Jeff Niles, GD, Ellie Hirschman, Squeak, Sally Wiggett, Payload, Captain John Tatterzak, Briscoe, Kyle Boars, Campy, John Morse, Zeep, Jonathan Patrick Russell, Quintessential, Kyle Boars, Expositron 1, Jim Barber, Expositron 2, Ellie Hirschman, Dr. Crankshaft Speck, Shane Harris, Announcer Bot 1, J. Thomas Jeans, Dr. Philbot, Jeff Niles, Excelsior, Shane Harris, The Robot News Announcer, Jack Ward, Fizz Gizzet and Frag Meltdown, Jonathan Patrick Russell, Rob, Captain John Tatterzak, Captain Brick Jammer, Shane Harris, Popsicle, Daryl Looney, and the news reporter, Danny Cutler. The title music was composed and performed by Daryl Looney. The incidental music was provided by Firstcom. The associate producer was Kay Wu. The sound designer, post-production editor, script editor, executive producer, and director was Jonathan Patrick Russell. Wearing too many hats as usual. The Rob Report was written and produced by Captain John Tatterzak, who retains all rights to the character and concept. The series Robots of the Company was created by Jonathan Patrick Russell, and the copyright is held by Purple Unicorn Productions and its parent company, Dream Realm Enterprises. All rights reserved. Any rebroadcast or pre-production of this program without the express written permission of Dream Realm Enterprises is strictly prohibited. We interrupt our regularly scheduled credits to bring you this update. We now come to you from DreamRealmSite.com. So join us there on the web from now on. Also, if you'd like to email us, please do so at darkbuilding1 at yahoo.com. That is all. Now, back to your regularly scheduled credits. Take it away, me. We were off our rockers during the making of this audiogram. Join us next time as things get thoroughly weird for the robots of the company in an episode hilariously entitled Bananas. This is the creditor, as always, begging you to stay tuned. This has been Quintessential. Join us here next week for Bananas! Copyright 2007. All rights reserved. Hey, Billy. Why do you look so down? Aw, oh, Dad, I got a computer, a PlayStation, and a barn full of iguanas, and I'm still bored. <sighs> Gee, Billy, when I was your age, I would read lots of stories in pulp magazines. Oh, with stories of weird adventure and fantasy, horror, satire, and lots of action. Wow, that sounds great, Dad. Yeah, I sure wish there was something like that right now. <laughs> there is, Daddy-o. Who are you? I'm Dr. Mary Von Rocksprocket, host of the Twisted Pulp Radio Hour. And now there's... Yeah? Twisted Pulp Magazine! <laughs> What's that, Doctor? 
Why, it is a return to greatness! Available on all your digital devices! That is what it is! Look! Whoa! Dad, this looks awesome! Exciting and, dare I say it, very unwholesome! You definitely have that right, my good man! Ha ha! Ha ha Thanks, Dr. Mary! My pleasure, Billy! And just between you and me, I am not sure that this man is really your father. Bye! Dad? Uh, uh, just read your Twisted Pulp magazine, Billy. Twisted Pulp magazine! Available in dark alleyways behind meth labs everywhere! Or at digitalvaudeville.com! That is D-I-G-I-T-A-L-V-A-U-D-E-V-I-L-L-E dot com!